Whenever we do appetizers, I'm always trying to make sure that we have some sort of protein. As an appetizer night, it's obviously gonna be a lot of carbs, probably a lot of fat, but I do try and make something that's heavy on protein. And tonight we're doing some crock pot kielbasa. This recipe couldn't be easier. If you've never cooked ever a day in your life, you've never made a recipe ever, you can make this one, okay? We are starting off with these kielbasa and I'm just gonna cut them into the just kind of like bite-sized toothpick size pieces. It can be whatever size you want them to be. I cut them at an angle because I think it makes them look a little prettier, but it doesn't matter. You can cut them however you want. We're gonna cut them into pieces and then just transfer them over to our crock pot. Now, I only used one packet of kielbasa. It is a, I think it was actually a Polish sausage, but it's already fully cooked. We're going to mix in about a half cup of chili sauce. You can buy this or you can make it. I use a sweet Thai chili sauce. I really like this one. And then I'm also gonna mix in a half cup of barbecue sauce. Typically we go with a sweet baby raise. That's just the one that we always gravitate toward and you just mix it all together. You can cook this on low for three hours. You can cook it on high for one and a half to two hours, however long you have. I mean, honestly, these are already cooked, so it's really just getting everything to work together. It's so simple and easy. Y'all, I'm telling you, it is the easiest recipe you can make. I fully expect these to be super hot. Also, I had to top them with a little bit of thyme. I just needed some green on the top. I needed additional color. Everything's just red or brown here. So let's give these a taste. So good. They've been cooking the perfect amount of time, in my opinion. They're not overdone. They, they've been cooking on low for maybe like three, three and a half hours. Very good, good flavor. Not spicy at all, but like really good smoky flavor. That's delicious. You, you know, you have the little hot dog things that you make these, but these are a bigger version and I think these are delicious. They look a little, little more elevated in my opinion. Very, very simple difference, but very good. We are making these oven fried feta rolls. Now I know some of you don't like feta, so this might not be the recipe for you, but I do think that you could do this maybe with a goat cheese or um, you could probably do it with cream cheese, honestly, but find some sort of semi-soft cheese that you like and you're gonna get the same concept. We love feta. So we need to add about two ounces or so of feta here into this bowl. If you're doing the full recipe, then you probably want about four ounces. Now I've got this fresh dill off of my garden that I am going to chop into here. We need about half tablespoon or so, but I really, really like dill. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that. We're also gonna be adding some minced garlic to this. About a half clove and you need this grated. So it's not too much, maybe like a quarter teaspoon or so. Now you just mix all of this together. Okay, so it's not, it's not really like a big production or anything. You're not having to really blend it. I am gonna break mine up just a little bit. Uh, my feta is already crumbled, which makes this really easy. If you wanna go the cheaper route, typically you can buy a block of feta and crumble it yourself, but the feta at Sam's Club is so cheap, already crumbled. So that's where we end up buying it. All right, I've already cleaned off my counters really well. We've got some phyllo dough here. If you don't know what this is, you get this in the freezer section of your grocery store. I did thaw mine out. You need it to be thawed. So we need one sheet of phyllo to start with. Oh gosh. Let's do two sheets for each one. We're gonna fold it crossways so you make this triangular shape. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bit of oil to the edges. Okay, so you don't need a ton. I've just got some in a bowl here, just to each one of the edges. This is gonna just help everything come together. Now we take a spoonful of our mixture and it's gonna go here at the top. We're going to fold over like we're making a burrito and then roll, okay? Oh, I forgot to get my parchment line baking sheet ready. Okay, so we're just gonna roll. So you're gonna come out with something like this right here, okay? All right, this, this goes seam side down onto your, onto your baking sheet, okay? 
So I'm just gonna use my little air fryer oven because I don't need to uh, heat up our entire oven for these, just based on the amount that we're gonna be making. got these all rolled they are seam side down I'm gonna take a little bit of oil and brush the tops of each one of them now uh, you can single roll these you don't have to use two sheets of phyllo I don't know I just thought maybe it would be good we'll try it maybe I won't do it again with two maybe I would do it with just one sheet per but you know that's that's what the kitchen is about experimenting and figuring this stuff out now these are going to bake for 20 minutes on 425 degrees and we're gonna do these in the little oven just because I've got several other things going in the bigger oven, but we're gonna make up the dipping sauce that goes with this while they're in there. It's gonna be so good. I've got a tablespoon of butter here in this saucepan. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil to that. Now we're really just wanting this to get fragrant. We're gonna add in a little bit of spices here. Half teaspoon or so, maybe even less of chili flakes or red pepper flakes, and then a touch of cumin. Again, maybe a half teaspoon. Just stir this together until it becomes fragrant. Pour this into a bowl. I just have a little dish here. That's all we need. And we add about a quarter cup of honey. And you just stir that together and that is your dipping sauce. I mean, look how good this is gonna be. Now this honey is a little spicy, so the red pepper flakes are what does that, or the chili flakes. So you decide how much spice you want. Great combination of flavors. I love feta with honey anyway, so I already knew that these two things together were gonna be really delicious. I think one phyllo roll is better than two, so that you really get the taste of that feta in there and maybe even overstuff the feta. But the concept behind this is really good. And obviously you can make a ton of these. And since they bake in the oven, you don't have to worry about frying them up and dirtying your kitchen and everything. This is a really neat appetizer option. We love our good chop boxes. <laughs> the other night we made ribeye. And then I think it was two weeks ago, we made the flank steak. I mean, the marbling in these, it's, it's so good. I love that I can be confident with all the Good Chop stuff when I serve it to my family because I don't have to worry about there being antibiotics or hormones, no artificial stuff, only the good stuff. This time we're really excited to try this. You guys know we love appetizer night. You know we do. Charcuterie trio. So we've got prosciutto, soppressata, and uh, pepperoni. This works out very well for our family. I am very excited to try that. Everything is sourced from the US and there is a 100% money back guarantee. How often does that happen? <laughs> Almost never that you get a 100% money back guarantee. There truly is something for everyone. They've got 100% grass fed ribeye, they've got T-bone, you've got wild caught salmon, organic chicken breast, pork tenderloin, seafood, steak, chicken, all of it. You can try Good Chop for yourself. Go to goodchop.com backslash YouTube. Use my code birds120 and you're gonna get $120 off across your first four boxes of Good Chop. We love this and I know you guys are gonna love it too. We're gonna make something called figgy flatbread. I had something like this at a restaurant and it blew me away. I love it, loved it, love it came home, we changed things up along the way, changed up the recipe a little bit. We change it up a little bit each time, but I am gonna post it on my website so that you guys will have it, at least what we do. You can make your own non bread, <laughs> but I'm gonna go the easy route. Okay, sorry, this is loud. We are using this artisan flatbread, which is the perfect size. And I think I'm only gonna do one because we're making something else as well. We'll save the other one because the kids can make their own pizza or something like that for lunch one day. This is goat cheese and this is a four ounce container. I'm probably gonna use all of it. Should I use all of it? Let's start with half of it. <laughs> I don't know. I might end up using all of it, but it does seem like a lot once I got it down there. We'll see. 
this one, there's no recipe for this. I'll jot down what I do, but there's not like a, um, a proper recipe, I should say. Okay, so we're just gonna smooth out. You can just dollop this on if you would like, but I'm just gonna try and smooth it out a bit. Doesn't really work well with the parchment paper down. That's only about two ounces. I might dollop a little bit more on the dollop. dollop I might, yes. <laughs> I might add a few more dollops to the top of the flatbread. Goodness. Took a week off of filming. Apparently forgot how, forgot how to cook. Forgot how to be normal on camera. Who am I kidding? I was never normal on camera. I love goat cheese, you guys. I really do. So if you're not a fan of goat cheese, a substitution would be, you could use ricotta. That would be a great substitution. Cream cheese would be fine. I think ricotta would probably be an excellent substitution though. Okay, I've got some arugula here. We're gonna add some arugula. Oh, I wanna add a little bit of spice. Okay, I just pulled some thyme, is that thyme? Yes, off of my garden. And I think that this just adds a really beautiful color because this thyme has a little bit of purple in it. So I think it's really pretty. Okay, garlic powder, just a little, just a little sprinkle of garlic powder. Adding some flavor there, a little bit of onion powder. You can add onions. Actually, it would probably be really good with some red onion on this. My preference on this is to bring a little bit of heat. So we're gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes. I'm only going to put it on half though because my husband and I thoroughly enjoy the red pepper flakes. The children, not so much. So not a lot, just a little bit on half. Ooh, that actually was a lot all in this little place right here. Let's fix that. Let's cut the corner off of this side of the parchment paper. Cut side, no pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. Remember that. Now we are going to take some arugula. Just gets kind of torn up. Not you, It's like a really rough chop, I guess you could call it, although you're using your hands, so it's not really chopped. Ooh, this arugula is a little yellow. We're gonna roll with it though, because we got a whole thing. I need to put that in a quiche or something really quick. I need to make a quiche. If you guys have not seen my breakfast quiche frittata type of thing, where we added arugula, it is so good. You gotta go check out the video where I made that. I'll have it linked because, oh my goodness. I feel like I just wanna make that every single week now for our breakfast. It's delicious. Also, it's made in the crock pot. Who knew? You can do everything with a crock pot. With flatbread, to me, this is how it differs from a pizza. I wanna go all the way to the edge with my toppings. I mean, I want this thing, we don't really want a crust area, which I probably should have taken the goat cheese out a little bit further. It'll be okay, but yeah, I want, I don't, I don't want an area that doesn't have anything. So we're, we're gonna take this all the way to the edges. Now, before I put on the prosciutto, I'm gonna take this honey fig spread. I actually just wanted regular fig spread, which is what we normally use, but, <laughs> but they were out of it. So we're going with the honey fig spread, the honey fig spread. I don't think I'm gonna be disappointed. I actually think it's probably gonna be delicious. Now, what I like to do, this is my little trick here. Don't just pull it directly out of the jar, okay? You want to take it, and actually, let's transfer a little bit here. Take some out and start to mix it. It's not gonna liquefy, but it breaks apart a little bit, so it's easier to kind of drizzle on. Now, this works really well with a regular fig spread. Since this is the fig and honey, we'll see how that goes. I don't. It's not gonna drizzle like the other one does. But actually, let's just add some honey. I mean, it's already got honey, right? At this point, we're not really gonna be drizzling, it's just kind of dolloping the fig spread all over. And honestly, I don't have a set amount here. I mean, this was probably a fourth cup, but this is one of those where I just make sure that you're gonna get a decent amount. When you take a bite, you're gonna get, the other one actually works a lot better, y'all. The one that's just fig. I mean, this one's gonna be fine, I know it is, but the other one will drizzle and it works out perfectly. Man, you know what I should have done? I didn't know it was gonna be this thick. If I had known, then we would put it on before the arugula. Let me know in the comments, are you a prosciutto fan? 
are you an arugula fan? I know a lot of people aren't. It's kind of a, I don't know the best way to explain it as a green. It's almost, I call it a spicy green, but it's not spicy in that it's burning. It's just got a really distinct like spice flavor to it. I really like it. It's almost kind of like a cross between a lemony flavor and a spicy flavor. I like it a lot. Now we're going to add the prosciutto. I also just love, I have a really hard time finding pepperoni that my son can eat because he cannot have nitrates and nitrites. They really affect him. And I just love that whenever I find something, I never have to worry about it when I order from Good, Good Shop, but every time I always check pepperoni and there's no, there's none in there. So he can eat it and he's gonna be very excited. So he will probably, that's a great, actually, the other flatbread, they'll make a pepperoni pizza for lunch tomorrow. Look at that. So many ways to use this charcuterie pack. Okay, now I'm gonna add at least two pieces, every bite. We'll have a bite of arugula, a bite of goat cheese, a bite of fig. Now I do think I'm gonna add a little bit more goat cheese because I really like the taste of it. So we're just going to crumble a little bit. This would be really easy if you had crumbled goat cheese, <laughs> but we're gonna just gonna crumble and make a huge mess on our fingers. It's part of the fun of this, right? Crumbled goat cheese and because I said I'm gonna be making that frittata, this is perfect because I've got leftover goat cheese. I didn't even think about that. Okay, I have all the ingredients for that. Now I'm really excited because y'all, it was so good. We're gonna bake this on 425 degrees. If you have a pizza stone, you can crisp it up a little bit more. You can also bake this directly on your oven rack. I'm a little scared to do that because I always feel like something drops to the bottom of my oven and then I have to clean it up even with the protector sheets that I have in there. So we are gonna bake it on this, which is gonna give us a little bit of a softer crust, probably around eight minutes at 425 degrees. I already know that we love this, but just for the sake of trying it on camera, now I did remember that this side was the one with the red pepper, red, red pepper flakes, yes. And this is the side without. It's so good. The way that those flavors work together, such a great before dinner idea. If you wanna have like a little flatbread, if you wanna do a flatbread night and do a bunch of different ones, you gotta add this one. So, so good. Oh, and the fig and honey spread. I actually think it's really delicious. It does add that different element of sweetness. I like how this fig spread, you, ha you have the seeds in there. Sometimes you get a fig spread and it's more of like a jelly or a jam, but this one to me is like, it's more of a pureed fig. I actually really like that because of those seeds and that texture. One thing you may have noticed about appetizers is they're often very carby <laughs> and maybe fatty and not super healthy, but there are some options that actually are, are decent. We are going to make a cheese dip that's actually really high in protein, super good if you serve it with, I mean, obviously chips are great with this and it's like a queso, but they're also really good if you're using celery, carrots, cucumber, all those like fresh veggies are perfect in this too. We're gonna add about a half cup. Now I'm only making a half recipe just because of what we are making tonight. I'm gonna add about a half cup of cottage cheese here into my blender cup and we're just gonna get it nice and smooth. Now, another bonus with this one is it actually can be made in the microwave. We're not gonna be making it that way. I'm gonna make it on the stove top because I have the time to do it. But if you wanna make it in the microwave, it takes like 30 seconds in there. We're just gonna blend this and get it nice and smooth. I'm also gonna add in some taco seasoning. I'm adding a half packet here and this is a hot one. So we're gonna add a little bit of kick to it, okay? You don't have to, you can make it mild if that's what you want to do. I actually changed my mind. I am gonna heat this up in the microwave to just make it even simpler. And I always forget, if you just take the bottom off of this, <gasps> not like that. Bigger bowl if you're gonna do this stuff, okay? Okay, all right, you know, I'm done. I'm done today. I just got it on the cabinet. Man, this video is just, it's a hot mess. Y'all are here for it, I guess. We are gonna mix in some cheddar cheese and then get this all melted. This is about, I'm gonna use about a fourth cup of cheddar. We'll melt it together. Mm. 
This dip is so easy to make. I mean, so easy. It took seconds to put together. You've got cheese. It's really tasty. Now for mine, I get a little bit of heat because of that taco seasoning, but it's literally three ingredients. I mean, it's so incredibly easy. I mean, you could put this in the crock pot too and just let it work all day. You could cook it on the stove top. So easy to make. One thing we love making is chicken wings. And so we are gonna make an oven fried chicken wing tonight. This is a dry rub, so it's really easy to make. And then it just kind of all mixes in one bowl and then you put it into the oven. So we've got some chicken wings that are already prepped here. And what I mean by that is they are completely dried off with paper towels, making sure that we got all the excess you know, moisture off of that. We need to add about a tablespoon of oil. We're using avocado oil, but you can use whatever your preference is and just mix that together really well. This is just under a pound of chicken wings. So we're gonna use a tablespoon of brown sugar into this. A teaspoon of garlic powder. A half teaspoon of onion powder. A half onion. teaspoon of mustard. It does smell very oniony. <laughs> Got paprika. I usually go a little heavier when it comes to paprika. I really like the smokiness and even the color that it adds. Half teaspoon of salt. A fourth teaspoon of chili powder. Okay, so they are nicely mixed. Our oven needs to be at 400 degrees. We're gonna put these on a wire rack that goes on top of a baking sheet so that they don't just sit on the baking sheet and they'll cook for about 20 minutes on 400. Now we actually have another recipe in the oven. So we're gonna use our little air fryer oven for this one. These need to go on your rack skin side up. I mean, technically you probably could air fry these but we're just going with the oven method tonight. The timer just went off for these wings and they actually look really good. However, I'm gonna broil just for a couple of minutes because I think that just to add a little bit more color on the tops would be really nice. I'm gonna try these with the dry rub. The rub is really good. It's a little sweet. There's a smokiness to it as well. And I think it's from that paprika, the brown sugar, but the flavor is good. Maybe a touch more salt, maybe a touch. The first thing that hits you is the paprika. Yeah. Then you have some sweetness. There's no heat on it at all. So if you like spiciness, throw some whatever your favorite hot sauce is on that. Obviously we didn't do that because of the kids. It's good. Yeah. I just think a hit, a touch more salt would be really nice. We're dipping ours in ranch. Normally we homemake our ranch, but tonight was just not the night for that. We just decided to go with the store-bought ranch. I mean, it's definitely a good option. And these cooked up really quickly, which I really like. They yeah. didn't have to spend an hour in the oven. Yeah. It was just, you know, easy to make them. Yeah. Our verse today comes from 1 John 4:15. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want more inspiration, I highly suggest that you check out the video that I have linked above. You're gonna get more encouragement and inspiration there. Hope you're having a great week.